Welcome to the Eye on Annapolis Local Business Spotlight. There are thousands of locally owned businesses in the area, some small and some large. Some you may know and others you don't. But one thing they all have in common is a great story, and we want to share it with you. Join us every Saturday as we talk to the founders, the owners, and the managers of local businesses you have come to know and love, and those you will come to know and love. Now here's your host, John Frenet, with this week's Local Business Spotlight. Joining us on the phone today is Charlie Saville, who is the Global Director of Client Care at Quantum Sales, which is located right here on Bay Ridge Road in Annapolis. How are you today, Charlie? I'm great. Thanks, John. Yeah, thanks for having me. I want to go into this and tell you that I'm not a sailor uh, to the point that I probably prefer to be on a power boat as opposed to a sailboat because I like consistency and figure I don't like to be dependent on the wind and the tides right. and everything else to lift me. But that's that's my problem. No, that's my own thing. No that I'm working out with my therapist and everything else. And it's <laughs> nothing to do with you. But Quantum Sales has been a name in Annapolis for quite some time. I've always known it to be the uh, lack of a better word, but the beige uh, sort of corrugated building on the right just next well i guess you're now next to the starbucks that wasn't there when you started uh, one of the first times i saw the wedding crashers and the woodwind down here in annapolis starred in that and i remember seeing the quantum q on their sale and i said yeah, well there's some there's some great product placement absolutely yeah we, were, we feel very privileged um we worked with ken k and the woodwind schooner that uh offers uh, hourly tours in the in the harbor here and uh, they've been a client of ours for quite some time and that was that was a neat thing to be a, a part of that movie for sure and also great to support another local business with ken and the woodwind and, and the good work they're doing getting more people out on the water under sale i might add yep I, not a, not I, a, <laughs> I, I have been on there i'm not i'm not opposed to other people's sailboats that's, yeah, you know, sure. that's, saves saves me yeah. on the wallet as well. But you guys absolutely. have been around since '96. How did that? How did Quantum get started? Yeah, absolutely. We so we were we were founded actually in that building there on Bay Ridge uh, back in 1996. And at that time, uh, the geography was much different. You know, instead of the Starbucks, we had the uh, Mexican Cafe. Maybe if you'd remember that, a few steps down the oh, hill. Oh, you're bringing back really good memories. Before I, I remember, before, yeah. before the deck was out front oh wow wow, wow, and, wow. and, and you would go, back, you would go yeah. in there they had a cooler full of beer and yep. you would just sit down at a booth or at a table and you would just go in and get your own beer and there's the little bottle opener right on the edge of it and you put it down and at Absolutely. the end of the end of the night you count your caps and that's you know, they figured out that what was the, i tell you many a sale plan was designed over those tables um and quite some time ago so um yeah so we were founded here uh, in 96 and basically it, it was an evolution of another group of, of sailmakers at that time under the brand of Sobstad Sailmakers. And um, five independent lofts came together under this idea that there was maybe opportunity in the sailmaking industry and in the yachting space in general to do something a little bit differently. Um, and our focus has always been on two main aspects. Number one is providing just the most amazing product possible. And then number two has been to take care of our clients the best way that we know how. And so it's, it is a bit unique um, in that market space and that some of our competitors focus more solely on product driven placement or focus solely on technology. And, and we really enjoy spending time with our clients and inside the industry. We're very much so committed to participating in the sport of yachting and feel this sense of obligation, if you will, to try and help yachting become uh, something better than it is uh, at present by participating in it. So it, it's been a lot of fun thus far. You said you focus on making an amazing product. What mm. what makes a sale amazing? Wow, yeah, that's a great question. And and we get that a lot from, from clients. And so, you know, I think that many, almost any sale maker is capable of putting together a triangle uh, that will power a boat forward. But what, what sets us apart and where we try to focus is really understanding the needs of the client and what's their intended use of the product. And then we can actually build a custom solution that will fit precisely that which it is they're trying to achieve. So just by a rough example, you know, you can think about uh, going back to the schooner woodwind, um, you know, the product that the woodwind uses, you know, cruising around in the bay. And their needs for performance versus durability associated with longevity 
are going to be quite different from someone who's looking to power their yacht across an ocean or further and beyond. So by taking that extra time to work with a client to understand truly what it is they're trying to achieve, we can provide the best solution to help them reach those goals. And, and I think that's what sets us apart. And then, of, of course, without diminishing you know, the craftsmanship and the quality of effort that goes into actually fabricating the solution once it's defined, I think that stands out as, as superior as well. Very proud of our product. Well, uh, here's, a, here's a, a, perhaps a stupid question, but if I buy a sailboat, I presume that it does come with the sails just like a car comes with the tires. But that, I mean, is that an option? Do I choose a, I'm going to presume a racing sail is much lighter weight, maybe made of Tyvek or something as opposed to a heavier canvas that's something like the woodman sure. might be using. But I mean, right. is that, do you work with boat manufacturers design? Because I mean, I, you know, I, I know how powerful the wind can be and how much sail surface area and all of that stuff. I mean, there's an awful lot right. of engineering. I mean, there's a lot more engineering than there is sewing going on here. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. And and we do have um, some great relationships with uh, manufacturers of yachts where we actually work with them and help specify some of the characteristics of the boat. So just as you said, you know, figuring out the best way to interface between the car engine and the tires to extend that analogy a little bit. You know, that that engineering aspect um, is is something that we lean in very hard on with new boat manufacturing. Absolutely. Now, you know, anyone who purchases a yacht, whether it's new or used, it's going to come with an inventory of sales, presumably whatever was used at, uh, you know, by the prior owner. Um, and, and we also have a very robust service team inside our facility, about 10 strong. Um, and, and a lot of time is spent as well reviewing existing sales and looking at things such as sale shape, the quality of the cloth, um, you know, the sale handling systems, how easily does it go up and down, those sorts of things to try and help people get a little bit more of enjoyment out of their, out of their boat. And that's, that's, that's a really wonderful experience as well to help new owners experience their yacht for the first time and help them go through that, you know, period of discovery about everything that they have and how the boat performs and how can we help the boat perform better if that's something that's desirable. Wow. Okay. Well, I mean, you talk about a, a boat coming with a complement of sails and an inventory of sails and whatnot. And I realize that there's different, you know, you've got the spinnakers and the jibs and everything else that has to, and, you know, I guess with the way the winds go and everything else. But I mean, are sails a, provided that they're not damaged, I mean, are they a replaceable thing? I mean, tires wear out. Do sails wear out? Mm. Yeah, unfortunately they do. And and a lot of that has, to, again, that's something that kind of goes into the matrix of, of supplying a, a solution to a client when they're looking for a new product is to understand and help them understand rather the balance between performance and longevity and speed versus durability. So you know, there are some high end sales, like for instance, the America's Cup, which is you know going on at present. Well, maybe not a great example because the America's Cup has some rules that limit how many sales you can have for the regatta. But there are products that we build for some of the higher end Grand Prix world class uh, racing programs where their use is measured in hours. Um, and then there are also products that we deliver to boats such as, it was the woodwind again, or cruisers, um, where their use is, is measured by years um, in terms of, of when they would need those turned over. So uh, high, you know, high performance Grand Prix sale, you may look at replacing it after 50 uh, hours of use, um, whereas a long-term cruising product might get uh, replaced after 7, 8, 10, 12 years. Wow. Um, abuse. Yeah. So there's a there's a big broad spectrum there. And as you said, you know, some of it's material science. What are we going to supply? How light, how thin, what stretch characteristics are advantageous, which is maybe odd if, if there are some listeners here thinking about who are, you know, fluent in sailing, because generally stretch is viewed as an enemy um, because it affects uh, sail shape. Sometimes you do want to have a little stretch in the sail. So a lot of those factors go in there and people who are much smarter than me, our design team helps, you know, weed through all of those questions to come up with the right sail, the right material, the right fibers. Now, do you, I mean, you are director of client care. So, I mean, I imagine you're mm -hmm. the one that uh, gets all the praise and all the, all, all, all <laughs> the complaints as well before they <laughs> move, move up the chain or something. 
But yeah. you've got a whole crew of designers here. I mean, and you've got people that are designing and fabricating and selling, I guess. I mean, you're doing it all, right? Yeah, yeah, for, for sure. Um, you know, we're, we're, we feel very fortunate to be a global company. Uh, there are about 300, 400 employees worldwide. Um, we've got 50, 60 lofts as well. Um, so we're, we're far greater than just the footprint of this local facility here. Um, in my role, you know, I do, I do, <laughs> I, I more so am here to help shepherd the client's experience through our service and our, through our new sales opportunities. But you are exactly correct in terms of the fact that we have our design team who, who works with our sales team to understand how to best build the product. We have a phenomenal production team who builds the product itself. And then we've got, I think, easily the best service team worldwide. Um, not just in this facility, but elsewhere, who who helps clients when they are experiencing difficulties. And and that, too, is an aspect of quantum sales that was born here um, in this loft back in the mid to late 90s that I think we're all particularly proud of, is that we're not just a here's your product, use it, throw it away, buy a new one uh, type of mentality, which had been prevalent in the sale making industry for quite some time. We're very much so invested in the process with the client to understand, you know, how's the product behaving? What can we do to help support you? What's the right solution? And sometimes the solution is replacing the sale. Sometimes the solution is recutting the sale. Sometimes the solution is just a little bit of onboard sale training. We're happy to provide that as well. So in my role over the past few years, we've really begun to challenge the idea of what traditional sales service can mean, whereas before it was, you know, someone who put a patch on a hole, we're really trying to think now about how can we best help a client achieve their goal in sailing, whatever that may be. And, you know, granted, that's going to be focused on the sale aspect for sure, but it's not unusual for our clients to call us for asking for advice about marinas or logistics or what do we know about a weather forecast or those things. So, you know, we really enjoy, we all genuinely enjoy the sport of yachting and sail making by extension. And so you'll find us, there participating or or in the sport when we're not in the loft working on the product. Well, that sounds like that. You said onboard sale training. It sounds like an excuse to get out of the office to me. Yeah, <laughs> that's code word for I'm going to be down at the yacht club for a little while with a, with a client. Right? Exactly. Exactly. Well, well, you you had mentioned you have 50 to 60 lofts. What is a loft? Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Again, and and so this the the COVID pandemic has again challenged kind of our our ability to deliver an experience for our clients. And so in, in the traditional sense of the word, a loft is typically meant uh, an area that had sail making or sail repair capabilities. And I, and I think it, it came, it came maybe from the, uh, uh, the late 1700s where the sail lofts were actually a loft so that these larger ships could actually sail in and the sails could be worked at kind of at grade, if you will. So the lofts, uh, it it maybe has a historical reference, but in our terms, our lofts all have sewing machines. We're capable of fixing sails, but really a sail loft now over the past 12 months has, has really morphed a little bit as we've tried to find ways to continue to engage with, you know, the yachting community at large. So yeah. So, so if I if I'm out sailing in my sailboat that I don't have, and I, I run into <laughs> run into a problem, and my sail needs to be repaired, I can pull into a a loft and and get that repaired over a matter of days. Absolutely, over a matter of hours if needed, for sure. So we 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 have one of the largest, if not the largest, uh, sail loft here on the Chesapeake Bay. Not only in terms of you know revenue and size, but also employees. And so we get sails from quite literally all over the world shipped back here. Uh, for some of our uh, more seasoned sail makers to fix, you know, when there's a more complex problem that maybe the local facility doesn't have um, the skill set to handle. But yeah, a, a sail loft would help you with that. We also move out and, uh, you know, anything that can be sewn, we're very happy to work on. We have a very robust uh, canvas loft as well inside this facility. So we build things such as Dodgers and Bimini's and we build awnings for people's homes. Um, during the beginning of the COVID crisis, we reached out uh, through uh, this network of organizations as well as the local restaurant community to help provide uh, COVID shields um, that were you know, mildly helpful in getting people back into the restaurants and the businesses. 
Fantastic. So you got you guys have a little little bit of side hustle going on with the uh yeah. with the the canvas to go off the back deck of my house and Absolutely. Give us a ring. A, yeah. You know, we <laughs> exactly. We built masks, um, you know, anything that we can do to support the community, for sure we're going to be there to help, but um, you know, if it's a textile product and it can be sewn or glued, uh, we can probably find some way to build it for you. What are most sales made out of? Ooh, that's a good question. Or isn't, so, there, isn't there, or are there so many different composites, I guess? Yeah, so you know, there are basically three main types of, of uh, sales, and really it boils down to two. We have uh, membrane sales, which are maybe the, the clear sales that you're used to seeing when you think about sport race boats that you can kind of see through where you can see the individual fibers through right. them. Yeah, and, and that's a laminated product that we build ourselves. We make that in-house where our designers will, act, will actually uh, design where each individual fiber should lay inside that membrane package. And we'll build the membrane and laminate it ourselves and then cut it so it put it all together. So that's one main style of, of sale product the other is a rolled good or it comes from a woven product so lots of different sale cloth manufacturers around the world will build a textile product such as a dacron or a laminated good and then we'll cut that up into different triangles or squares and build a sale out of it so those are the two main ones but i think the term we hear most often is dacron and that's probably the the number one most used material and that's going to be the white sale that you see um, and think of as as a traditional sale. So you, you say with the membrane ones, I mean, they're the actual struts, for lack of a better word, inside with inside mm -hmm. that sale. Is that they're actually? It's not just like a random type. No, of a, yeah. Wow. No. Yeah. No, not at all. Yeah. And so that's where some of the that's where some of that our design or any designer rather some of the design expertise comes into play there when we begin to decide what specific fiber do we want to blend. So carbon and technora are a couple of fibers that we use a lot uh, when building a membrane product and each of them has their own distinct characteristics in terms of how they perform and we will blend a carbon with a technora to create the right balance based on as i said before one you know how much stretch are we looking to achieve inside a sale it is possible to have too stiff of a sale um, and then we'll go through and we'll actually design precisely where each of those individual fibers should live inside the sail um, and, and go down and build that uh, and put it together. It's pretty neat. It's pretty neat when we look at these sorts of things, deciding where we want fiber, where we don't need as much fiber, where there could possibly be too much fiber as we approach some of the corners. Um, and generally speaking, those sails, while we do build them for cruisers, Generally speaking, those are very much so performance oriented and we do have performance oriented cruisers, but those are going to be some of the higher end racing um, projects where weight and speed are at a premium and we're really fighting for every 10th of a knot or 100th of a knot of speed. I'm sure. There's something yeah. way different for, you know, an America's cup boat versus, yeah. you know, the, sure. somebody that's just tacking around in the Wednesday night races or right. just, you know, somebody out on just putzing around up and down the Severn, but that's right. That, that's um, that's amazing. Now you don't have any sail offs like in Kansas and Nebraska, right? <laughs> not that I many. Mean, <laughs> not that many. Oh uh, yeah, no, not that many. Although we do have representatives actually in in those locations. So you know, and again, you know, challenging our ability to support sailing. You know, not just uh, obviously very interested in the Chesapeake Bay, but and and our and our home here, but challenging the way in which we can continue to support it further afield um, is is really an amazing opportunity as well. But as you can imagine, almost all of our lofts are located right on the waterfront somewhere. Sure, <laughs> sure, sure, yeah. or, or 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 pretty yeah. darn close. That's for sure. Or pretty darn close. Absolutely. You've been sailing all of your life, right? Yeah. You are a yeah. a sailmaker. By or by trade? I, I mean, do you I am. have you yeah. you've made sales yourself? Yeah, for sure. So uh, I I'm actually a third generation sailmaker. Uh, my uncle uh, is a sailmaker currently and still over on the eastern shore. Um, competitor. My grandfather. Yeah, I like to think we do pretty well against him, but yeah, he's a competitor <laughs> for sure. <laughs> 
makes for some fun talk around Christmas time for sure. Um, so yes, yeah, so, uh, you know, so my uncle, my grandfather, uh, my wife as well, her family, uh, all come from a sale making background. And I too started, uh, with quantum in a role on the floor as their service manager. Um, but I've been a sale maker since my teenage years and, uh, started with quantum on the floor working in the service department and, uh, feel very fortunate that, uh, had some additional opportunities to work my way up. And, you know, we're also equally proud of the fact that almost every single person at Quantum um, has a strong sale making background, regardless of their current role. So we're famous for saying, and it's true, that our IT director who works here in Annapolis has got to be one of the best spinnaker makers in the entire universe. And he, too, came up through um, a background of sale making with quantum and was integral uh, in, in the formation of quantum in 1996 and just worked his way and through different opportunities now sees himself in that role. So I think that too is, is pretty special about the quantum environment is that really anybody in the facility can go grab a pair of scissors and go upstairs and help anyone with any problem they have on their sale. Not, you guys are all yeah. in. Oh yeah. It's, That's I mean, awesome. it's a way of life. Yeah. It's a way of life. It's uh it's a way of life. It's a fun thing. And we've all had these neat memories of sale lofts being fun spaces to really, truly. I mean, it's genuine. We really believe in supporting the yachting industry. And it's fun to be in a sale loft. And it's fun to engage with people who are interested in sailing. And it's it's genuine and it's natural. And it's it's the most fun we can possibly have. So It doesn't sound like your job sucks. It doesn't suck. It never <laughs> sucks. Like I was, I was just up at the loft for a little while talking to the guys and I was like, Oh yeah, I got to go do something else. You know I mean? We're there on the weekends. We're there on the evenings, you know, I mean, we're just there doing stuff. It's not unusual to see us all in there on the weekend working on something just cause, just cause. That's great. Well, that, let's yeah. take, take me back to 96. How did this, how did quantum start? Who started it and what's, um, so Larry Leonard and Ed Reynolds, as well as Farley Fontenot, um, were three of the main principals. And, and uh, Ed Reynolds is, is still with the company, now in the role of president. He's out in Traverse City. Farley Fontenot coming as one of the loft representatives from Seabrook, Texas. Uh, Larry Leonard here in Annapolis um, was at the time the owner of the Sobstad loft, which is what genesis this um, facility and onwards to quantum sales. Um, and, and gosh, there was one more on the West coast and I can see his name and I can't say it right now, but basically those four Sobstad individuals came together and, you know, as history has it, there was a renewal opportunity to basically renew their affiliation with Sobstad. And I think they all kind of got together and said, wait a second, guys, we can, we can do this better. Um, and at that time, the Sobstad branch was kind of moving a little bit away from providing, what what I think is of of a superior product to the client and in all of the terms of that means, you know, really listening to the client, really focusing on attention to detail, not sparing no expense in the production, but really just making sure that they were delivering a quality product versus trying to dumb down the product and extract a whole bunch of profit out of it. And, and basically the four of these individuals just got together and said, you know what, we're going to try and do it differently. We're going to focus on the client. We're going to focus on the design. You know, it was in our name, Quantum Sales Design Group, um, when we were founded. Uh, and the idea was that they were going to go out and take on the world uh, and really try to achieve something new in the sale making sphere. And we still got a lot to do, still a lot of work to do here, 24, 25 years later, so to speak. Um, but we're very, very happy with our positioning. We're the second largest sale maker in the world right now. Um, but we're more proud of the fact that, you know, we have really happy clients and that they want to come back to us. Interesting. Who's who's yeah. just out of curiosity? Who's the first? Who's the largest sale maker? Is that North Sales? That's the only other one I know. North Sales, yeah. North Sales by far is the largest sale maker in the world. And I presume so. Quantum is just a play on the on the word the, using the least amount of physics <laughs> yeah. to make things go exactly. go or <laughs> something yeah. along those lines. Exactly. Yeah. Well, Charlie, Correct. when did when did you first start sailing? I mean, you've been a sail maker, but when did you? Yeah. So, I mean, my first memories of sailing were back like in my bassinet with my grandfather and. We were in, you know, in junior I, oh, sailing. All right, I'm, I'm, yeah. call, I'm calling BS on that. If you were in a bassinet, yeah, you weren't remembering this. Were I've you? got, I have pictures that I'm like, <laughs> okay, there we go. Here I am, you know, taking me out for sailing, you know. And um, 
I tell you what, man, at first I really didn't care for it. I'll be honest. And I remember my, you know, we would go and the grand, my grandparents would say, okay, we're going sailing down to the yacht club and we have to leave at eight so that we can get there by lunchtime. And I'm just thinking, this is just, this is dumb. Like we could leave by car 10 minutes before <laughs> lunch starts and we'll be fine. You know? <laughs> so, so we did that. It really began to set in with junior sailing. Um, when I think I was, you know, uh, 10, 12, early teens was when it really began to set in. And then um, I raced in college um, and from there set out uh, working as a professional captain on private yachts for about a decade, sailing around the world. Oh, that's a horrible yeah. job. Yeah, that was terrible. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was yeah, tough years. Yeah. And <laughs> and had the uh, and had the, uh, the, the awesome experience as well of having met my wife during that uh, during that time period. So it wasn't all horrible. Um, yeah, you know, so to speak. But um, so, yeah, it's been it's been a part of, of who I am and what I do for an early age. I think the first time I got paid to fix a sail, I was 14 or 15 and someone in junior sailing ripped a sail and I went and sewed it up and they gave me 10 bucks. And I thought, yeah, that's not bad. You know, we can do this. Um, so, yeah. On the phone with us is yeah. Charlie Saville, who is the global director for client care at quantum sales you want to find out more about that you want to go to simply enough quantum sales.com they're right here on bay ridge road in annapolis the second largest sale maker in the world with um started right here in 1996 um as a lifelong sailor starting in the bassinet and you know working on <laughs> on yachts around the world and everything else you've seen a lot of ports and a lot of sailing meccas and Annapolis keeps saying, I'm going to put you on the spot, Annapolis keeps saying that they're the sailing capital of the U.S., some people will tell you the world, and a lot of people call bull on it. So what, what, <laughs> what, what in your opinion, and it doesn't have to be Annapolis, even though you like it and live here and everything else, Sure. what, what in your opinion is the sailing capital of the U.S. and the world? Right. So, you know, you know, so I didn't come by this uh, this position of uh, global director of client care by being, you know, too uh, confrontational and these sorts of things. So um, I've seen some pretty amazing ports and all of them are special in their own way. The the neat thing about Annapolis that's interesting to us and we've lived here for just over a decade is just the absolute enjoyment that everybody gets from it. I mean, the frostbiting in the wintertime stands out as exceptional. The amount of people who still have their boats in the water right now in February, even though it should be too cold to do anything, that too stands out as truly exceptional. And so, you know, for me living here right now, I say Ty goes to Annapolis for a lot of those reasons. Very well politically stated. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate that, you know. <laughs> yeah, Charlie, this is this has been great and very informational. And I do want to get over there and I want to check out the sale what a sail loft looks like. Um, yeah, please do come by. Yeah, we offer tours and we we really enjoy it. We have um, a number of uh, uh, elementary schools that bring their children over, non-COVID years, of course. And we do open houses and bring the public in and the children in to show them a little bit about it. I mean, it, it really is the most fun I can think I could have with my life right now. And we just love sharing that with everybody. You know, you got to love it when you talk to somebody that's got passion that just totally oozes over the phone, which is, which, which, which is, which is fantastic. But anybody that's listening, okay. go to quantum sales.com, especially if you are a sailboater, if you are a power boater, uh, think about getting a sailboat and go there. You know, I don't know. <laughs> Absolutely. I don't know. Quantum Q U A N T U M sales.com. And uh, again, on the phone with us is Charlie Saville, who is the global director of client care. And I thank you very much for your time this afternoon. I hey, this was a blast. Yeah. Thank you, John. Yeah. We, yeah. We need, we need to do it again. I definitely want to come see it and, uh, and check it out. And um, we'd love to, you know, maybe I'd love to do another podcast, uh, not necessarily on this business thing, but just maybe talk about some sailing or something like that. You can educate me a little bit more when it, when we get back into the swing of things in the summer, that'd be cool. And he's Anytime. I welcome that opportunity. All right, man. Thank you very much. Hey, have a great day. Thank you. Thanks for listening to this week's Local Business Spotlight. Please make sure to visit ionanapolis.net for all your local news, events, and opinion. And in case you haven't already, please subscribe to the Ion Annapolis Daily News Brief, where we bring you all the day's local news direct to your phone, tablet, or computer in about 10 minutes. It comes to you at 6 a.m. every Monday through Friday, and you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.